Greetings. Hi, how are you? Anyon <laughs> Hashimilka. I'm over here at uh, Domino Sound Technologies in Korea today. And what we're doing is we're doing a review on how records are manufactured as well as to understand in their manufacture how we clean and how we can maintain records. So one of the things that's important is to understand how records are made because to understand the process over here you'll understand what we have to do in order to maintain them. So this is at the Cascadia plant in Portland, Oregon in 2019 and we had a visit with the American Record Society of Collections. These are people from University of Seoul, University Tokyo, uh, McGill University in Canada, uh, BBC in UK. These are all people that restore, conserve, and catalog music, voices, and it's not only records. They do wire recordings with wire, tape recordings with tape. Uh, they do the holograms in the 1890s made by Pathé in France. So they catalog, conserve, and collect recorded media. So we visited this plant, all of us, back in, uh, in May of that year. So what we're going to focus on for you to understand is this. How is a record made? So records move from plastic all the way through a stamping system or molding, trimming, and then we have a final product that's being made. So here we see a press. Now, making records is very dirty. You can see that this area is very, very dirty. They have eight machines making records. So what we do is we start with a PVC mix. Normally, PVC is clear. It's not black. This comes from a company in Taipei where they mix carbon and the white PVC. We use carbon so that there is less friction with the needle and the records. So when we play a record, we then have a surface while the needle will heat up, we are still able to develop a reasonable temperature with less friction. So that's what's added in here, but also we need to add plasticizers, liquefiers, and stabilizers. So this company has everything mixed in. And uh, again, this company is very famous in the world, TPC. So here you also see colored pellets. Colored pellets are not for audiophile use in the sense of the record, whether it's clear, Germans like that, whether it's white, many vanity records in Germany are sold, they're white, they're not the best quality. Okay? Again, it's because not having the carbon to allow the reduction of friction. Uh, here they actually throw onto the stamper red pellets, coloring, that make one-of-a-kind records. So this is again at the factory. So here we start with the pellets that come in and the pellets go along a conveyor belt and they are then made into a biscuit. So this is a biscuit. Mm -hmm. In, in Fahrenheit, this is about 185 degrees, very hot. So these are loaded in the machine. So here, pellets to the biscuit, and they're stacked. Okay. 
So here again, here's one. Doesn't look too good. So at the plant, we use stampers. So we're not going to talk about how these are made. These are what are actually used in the process to make records. Okay? So we all know we have side A, side B, or side 1 and side 2. So here, this is the bottom area of the stamper, right here. So here is the bottom, side B. What happens is, the label, the record label, falls onto the stamper. It's not applied after. It runs and falls on the stamper. Then the PVC biquit, biscuit, biscuit, that's 185 degree, now cooling, is sitting on both the label and now on the stamper side B. Finally, we now have stamper side A. It drops onto this assembly. So here we'll see where we now have the biscuit ready, label side B, label side A, and then now the stamper is together. Okay? You can see, you know, this is about 2.54 centimeters, or about an inch. So what happens is we now have pressure. Pressure is now applied to this hot material. And you can see here we have excess plastic. The plastic is being squeezed out of this. So as it's being squeezed out, we then have this edge that appears. So here, this plastic is now squeezed out. And this stays in the machine for about three minutes. We need to cool the plastic. The plastic needs to cool down so that it does not warp. So depending on the manufacturer, sometimes three minutes, sometimes three and a half minutes, but you cannot speed this process up. We need to do this carefully. If we eject the record too fast, it warps. So sometimes you buy brand new record and it's already like this. Those manufacturers stamp too fast. They don't let the stamper cool down. So here is the cutter. This removes, goes around and cuts the record. So the record then drops and it drops onto a piece of paper and it's very hot still. And you see the label is there. It's already on the record. In some records we had polystyrene records. That's where people actually put the sticker on the records. Typically we use PVC. So uh, I have uh, maybe a question to ask. So here we've gone from biscuit to the record. So this I got out of the machine before cutting. Okay, this is before cutting. So here again, these records are very hot. So if you think of buying a new record, and you play the record, and you hear pop, pop, it's because here on the edge, the dust in the factory falls onto the hot record. So when it falls onto this edge, it now is cemented into the release agent. And that's where you play the record once, you hear a pop or two, that's where it comes from. So here, this is a very dirty factory, and there is something that I talk about. I talk about release agent, okay? These records come out of the stamper because there's a type of oil, a silic acid, that comes on the surface of the record. Not where someone has sprayed an oil on the record for the record to come out, like in home cooking, 
it actually comes out of the biscuit. So back in 1970s, we had the Sure Company. They came out with a cartridge called the V15, very famous. Two types, there was one, the Mark III, and then there was the Mark IV. Here, what happens is they had problems with the Mark IV. Audio files would play the record, and the needle would get dirty. They had something coming on the needle of the Mark IV. So, this document they made, I found this out only two years ago. We've been working with this project for going on nine years. They called it a pressing oil. So here you have the groove with an oil. That needle was being eat that needle was eating away at the oil. That's why the needle was getting dirty. So they tried how to remove the oil. They wiped it with a pad. They used cleaning liquids. Uh, sometimes the cleaning liquid added an extra layer. So the record looked shiny, but we did not improve anything, and we even reduced the quality of sound. Here, Shure also tried glue. Many audiophiles buy this glue. You cannot get into the groove. Glue is too big. Water, this actually is incorrect. The drop of water is bigger than the groove, so it cannot get in there. So here, they found out that they could not restore a record. So now we're going to talk about our process and how our process is actually helping in basically taking care of your records. So. Remember I talked about the pressing oil. Here we have a record that is stuck in the stamper. It's stuck. Why did it get stuck? Well, when records sometimes come out defective, what happens to the factory, depending on how much you paid to make a record, chop the record up. Chop, 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 chop and they chop the record up with the paper label and the ink and then they make a new biscuit but they need to change the mix of the biscuit add different liquefier stabilizer because once it's pressed we already have that oil release agent has come out here this man is not happy it's stuck so how, now, now he has maybe 12 of these in the machine waiting, waiting to come out. They're all no good. So he actually uses a polish, polish for car wheels, and he puts it, you can see the polish, like a wax polish. He puts it on the stamper to help to get the defective records out. So that also proves my discovery that you need to have an oil that comes out. So here, we bought a very expensive microscope to prove to the audiophile community back in 2018 that yes, there is an oil. How do I know? Here I took a picture with our microscope where it's 54.8, 54.2 microns in height, the record total. Bottom of the groove, bottom of the groove to the top of the record. You can see something here, little round bubbles, release agent. So we take this record, we put it in our machine, and here, we're now at 42.99 microns. We've reduced the height of the record. Why? No more oil. Now, this picture was taken in 2019. You can see there's a detail here, and this is the same record that I did not know then 
how to find the same place for the microscope. Now what I do is I scratch the record. I put some paint so I can find the exact place with the microscope. But this is the same record. Other slides that you'll see show the same groove. So here, what your needle is doing is your needle is playing this oil. So that's why your needles get dirty. And also, you do not hear the pressing. Here is what was pressed. I want to play this. I don't want to play this and the oil. So by removing this, we now have more signal coming out of the cartridge to the preamplifier. So now I see and feel the music that was hidden by the oil. So this is at, again, ARSC visit to Cascadia Records. This company does not make 20,000 record, 500, 1,000 record. They play nearly every record. So you can see area is dirty, okay? It's dirty. We'll drink here. So here they play a record, and if they have two pops or less, pass. Three pops or more, chop, 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 rebuild. So I asked her to stop. I said, this record you approve. Yes, it's very good. Please play again. She played the record again. More pops. Five pops, not two. Oh, she said, defective record. I said, no, 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 no. Not defective. This area is dirty. Okay? So when you play a record on your turntable, the needle makes 1,200 degrees, plus or minus, very hot. The oil bubbles. So the dust in your house, here, the dust in this test area falls on the record and then cools. Now we have new pops. So that's why when you play records, before you play records, doesn't matter whether they were restored with our system, you use felt to remove dust and you use carbon fiber to remove static. Because if I did not use my system to remove the oil, you can create more pops at home. Because we all have dust. And we saw that here. We had dust everywhere. Just going from the restoration system to the turntable. So here, we then took our machine, which you'll see later, and three five-minute cycles in our machine. No more pops. Then I said, let's play the record again. We played the record four more times, no pops. So it proves that once the pressing oil, that sure called 50 years ago, and me, my discovery of oil, which is a release agent, no oil, no pressing a, a release agent, no pops, and better signal. So here, in 2019, Michael Fremer from Stereophile Magazine, he's now with Absolute Sound, he's back to where he started 40 years ago as analog editor. He did not believe this. So, this is a Kians VHX 7000 2D, 3D microscope. Very expensive, and it allows me to not just look 2D picture, like everyone else. I can see what's in the groove. So here, this is this record, H2O. There's a spot here every time I play, that spot pop. So here you see the dust in the record groove. And the height of the record, 31.84 microns. That's the height from the bottom to the top. So here, 
with our process, we remove the oil. Look, the dust is gone, that, and we've gone from 31.8384 minus 30.94, 0.89 has been removed of release agent. It's gone. So your needle now doing two things. No more pop, but look at the detail. Detail is on the side left channel, right channel, more detail. So that's why with the release agent removed, I now hear better. I see the imagery. So we offer about 1.3 dB extra out of the cartridge to the phono stage preamplifier. And again, here's another dirty record with release agent. So, Two things to remember, we have an oil and dust and fungus, three to five microns. That's the size that we have. So why do cleaning systems don't work? Forget about, we haven't even spoken about ours. Why? It's very simple. I use this as a joke. Opposites attract, okay? So. We all played with magnets when we were young. And if you remember, a magnet has north side and a south side. And if you take the south side to the south side, they repel. Poof. Yet, if you turn the magnet around, north side and south side, they stick together. They attract. So the patent is where we discover that the record is negative. Water with cleaning soap that everyone sells, also negative. So they repel. You cannot clean a record with any solution, either manual, either in a vacuum system, ultrasonic system, if they even work, you can't because they repel. You can do this test at home. And, and you'll also see that all of the systems out there, manual, vacuum, ultrasonic, they all need drying. Vacuum drying to remove water. Air drying to remove water. It's because, again, water and the record repel. So you have surface tension here. So you can do this at home, very easy. Take a glass rod, turn the water on at your house, bring the water to the tap, it will come down straight because glass has no charge, no charge. If I now rub with silk, I now have a positive charge on the glass. I bring the glass rod to the water, the water now is going to come to it. So this is what we call the triboelectric charge table. Water, record, same charge. So what we do is we take the negative record, we apply a spray, and it changes the charge from negative to positive. Then we put it in our ultrasonic machine and we use cavitation. So again, now the positive is into the water and now the water is being attracted by ultrasonic action. Something also we talked about before is the size of a groove, 30 to 35 micron wide. Water droplet, about 100. So that cannot get into the groove. The groove is 30 to 35 microns wide. I cannot use water to clean a record with a soap or without a soap. Impossible to get in the groove. So here's just some details. Uh, these are older pictures now made by electron microscope about 50 years ago. But you can see that music is like this. And this also shows where detail of music. The grooves in a record are not straight. They move left to right. This is classical music. This is drum and bass, bass, dong, 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 dong. This is rock, rung. 
So you have dynamic movement of the grooves. And here again you see the, the record where we have right channel and left channel. And it moves like this to create the sound, either moving coil, moving magnet, or, or iron. So here again, we have now again removed that dust in the release agent. And once we've used our system, we never have to process the record again to remove the release agent. There's none left. So <clears throat> why do vacuum systems not work? Easy, because water on the record, they repel each other. Why do manual systems not work? Because the record is negative and the water is negative. They repel. Here's an ultrasonic system. Why cannot we use any ultrasonic system? Because negative of the record, negative of the water. And this is manual system, same thing. Water is negative, record is negative. So again, this shows the, the, the size of the water droplet. Groove 30, 38 microns, water droplet too big. Cannot do anything. So what we do is we use ultrasonic. Ultrasonics, they have a stainless steel tank and you have transducers underneath. And they create audio signal, 25 kilohertz. 35 kilohertz, 40 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, 120 kilohertz. It's audio signal that creates waves and bubbles. And the bubbles, as they rise, they explode or implode and create a wave. So here we have a record and we have water with or without a soap. We cannot do anything because negative and negative. They're the same. So all you do is you move a bit of the surface oil maybe, surface fingerprints. You cannot get in the groove. So what we do is we change the charge of the record and now we're able to remove that release agent. There is a problem. It's not a problem. It's as this record is in our machine, as it turns, the positive comes back to negative because the coating, the spray that I put on the record disappears. So also something very important is ultrasonic energy is not even. Doesn't matter whose system it is, very very dangerous to use an ultrasonic on anything because here very high power but not even. Power here power here, power here. When I get to the middle of the record, I have still high power, but it's a bit better, more even, because the waves spread out, we have the bubbles that rise. Here, we have, again, very high intensity up on the top. Better on the top than in the middle. So, we use aluminum foil as a test. Uh, this is, again, we did this for Michael Fremer and the audio community at large back in 2018 where I worked on the space shuttle in 1978 and we had ultrasonics that were 4 meters, 5 meters, by 3 meters, by 4 meters, very big. And we had to test the ultrasonic transducer every day. So we had a big sheet of aluminum foil put in the machine and we should see even cavitation. So to test ultrasonics, what I did and what we've done is I made a aluminum record, aluminum foil record. I made a form, put aluminum foil, and we put it in an ultrasonic machine. Here you see something here on this record, high impact area, high impact area. Remember that picture that we had here, where here high intensity, but uniform. So now this proves that this area has that high intensity energy. And that damages records. It can potentially damage records. So what we do 
is we take a 35 kilohertz ultrasonic. Why 35 kilohertz? 35 kilohertz is known to move 3 microns of dust, 5 microns of fungus. It's the right frequency. 25 kilohertz, lower, very noisy, made to clean metal parts, oil. We're interested in removing dirt and dust in a record. Higher frequencies made to remove bacteria, not part of the record. So we add a resonance. So how do we add, so this is regular sonic, just like what you saw here, high, very uneven signal. We have a cover that goes onto the tank that applies air pressure. Remember, bubbles rise, they implode, explode, air comes out, we force air back in. So unlike these uneven area of this 35 kilohertz system, we induce extra 70 kilohertz. So now we have even everywhere, everywhere it's even. So now we have even coverage from the edge of the record. So even coverage from the edge of the record to the dead wax area, both sides, nice and even. That's what the resonance does. So here we've tested these machines. This is homemade. Uh, homemade uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or 12 records. So these do-it-yourself assemblies do not work because, and here's the test, this is record number 3, this is record number 5. They space the records. And what happens is, the space of the records is too close. So you do not have even cavitation. Here we have some cavitation, no cavitation, and we can see it here. This is uh, much better. So here, there we go, let me uh, get it clear, 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 here. No cavitation. So these edges, not getting anything in this ultrasonic only in some areas here. I now go on this side, a little more cavitation here, but also empty, empty, empty. It's uneven. And depending where your record is, you may get less cavitation. So this is record number three. And here we have less cavitation. It's being rejected by standing waves. So our system, we can only do four total records because the spacing has to be one and seven eighths inch. So this is, uh, here again, I measure with the cavitation meter. So in August 2022, Michael Fremer, in his second to last article in Stereophile, said, okay, Charles talks about aluminum foil. Maybe we need to have standards cleaning standards for any machine. So I bought ultrasonic tester that is used by manufacturer of ultrasonic. And I put in between and these machines here, one, two, three, four, five, six records, I put in between the records to see the, a level of cavitation. And we would see that very low cavitation or no cavitation. In our system, we have one and seven eighths inch between records. So between our four records, even cavitation. So here again, uh, this is our system. This is record number two and three, same level. Record three and the edge, same even cavitation. Here, out of our discovery with Mr. Fremer, we found out that ultrasonics being sold, one German manufacturer for maybe 15 years, one manufacturer out in the Baltic states for the last three years or so, four years, they have a 40 kilohertz system and a 120 kilohertz system. We put aluminum foil in those machines, no cavitation. This we did last year couple of weeks ago, so now we're in November of 2022, 
This was done in September of 2022 with this tester, no cavitation. So I prove no cavitation with this manufacturer and in this new 120 kilohertz system, no cavitation either. These systems are bubblers. They create bubbles. There's soap in the tank. The soap is now active. The soap cannot do anything to the record because the soap and the record have the same charge. So all you're doing is air drawing with this ultrasonic what came off the record surface, not the groove, what came off. So if this machine had 15 records or 20 records that I process, the soap has the dirt from 20 records that are stuck in the system and I'm air drawing them on the records. So that's, that's why we've noted that those ultrasonics are bubblers. Something very important is someone should not use any chemical on a record. First of all, the best way to clean a record is again, just use the felt for dust and the carbon fiber for the static. When you're using cleaning agents, you need to ask the manufacturer what is in the bottle. You read what's on the label and then you go on Google and look for PVC chemical compatibility list and you type in the chemical. It will tell you if a record is safe with that chemical or not. Alcohol is very bad for records. Now we use a small amount of 70% alcohol in our 6 liter tank to kill fungus. Fungus on a record is alive or dormant. I don't want to breathe it. It has nothing to do with cleaning and it doesn't hurt. So this is famous chemical used by the US government, the Library of Congress, called Turgitol. I have no idea what Turgitol is. So is it safe for records? So here I now go and type in Turgitol and I get material safety data sheet. When you transport chemicals anywhere in the world you need to know what's in that bottle. When you have children, grandchildren, you, if they drink it, you need to know what to do to save them. So the material data sheet, the MDS, says this is ethylene oxide. What is ethylene oxide? I don't know. I'm not a chemist. So Google PVC chemical compatibility chart, type in ether, or sorry, ethylene oxide, guess what? causes cancer and is a solvent, severe negative reaction with PVC. You don't use that on plastic. It's a solvent for paint. Not good. Here's an ultrasonic manufacturer selling this liquid with their system. Is it safe for the record? I don't know. I read, I read the bottle. No ingredients, yet they're selling this. So. If there's no, invis no, nothing on the bottle, don't buy it. And you know, you have other things, you know, if you drink it, what happens to you? And how do you get rid of it? Flush it down the toilet? I don't know. So, Michael Fremer is very powerful. Andre Jennings, these are people, absolute sound, stereophile. Manufacturers need their support. Reviews, good, good sound, bad sound. So Michael Fremer contacted this manufacturer. Please tell me what's in the bottle. Manufacturer said no. Michael Fremer, very powerful journalist, investigator, he says you tell me what's in the bottle or I will tell everybody you are not answering my question. So the manufacturer said this is glucopyronese oligomeric Dectal, I can't even pronounce this. It's a long chemical. So, we found out that this chemical is actually an ether. It's an ether 
What is an ether? Bad for plastic. And yet they're selling this to put in their ultrasonic machine. Whether it works or not, I don't care. You do not use this chemical on a record. And also, 12% is toxic. Very bad for your health. So, as a question, you just bought this machine. Can it do anything to a record? Yes or no? Well, first question you do is you look at the bottle. What's inside? What, any chemical name on there? No, don't buy. Okay, so now I have a chemical name. Is it friendly to PVC? No, don't buy. Yes, it's friendly. Okay, but can they clean into the grooves? Of course not, because the molecule, sorry, the water droplet, larger than the groove. So surface cleaning only. And the problem is the record will have residue because the water is repelled by the record. And all you're doing by vacuum drying or blow drying is you're coating the record. Our system, restored record, totally dry record, only a few droplets of water. Why? It's stripped. We have nothing left on the record. Vacuum system, same thing. Are the chemicals safe? Yes or no? Can they get in the groove? Of course not. What are you doing with the vacuum? You're leaving a coating. These systems actually take longer for us to restore because depending on how many times someone used the vacuum system, the film from the soap is taller, higher. Is this safe? Many record <laughs> resellers put WD-40, make it look nice and shiny. I don't care about shiny records. I only buy records that are either new pressing, new artist, okay, or old records. The new records, new artists, all analog, not digital. Many of the remakes, they will say, made from tape. Okay, made from tape, okay. I buy old records, and with my process, I don't care what the record looks like. Most of the time, I'm now in the groove, and I can pick up the sound. So I have the original artist's artwork, the original mixing board, the ex existing producers. I have history. I have history with records. So here again, impossible to clean. Anything impossible to restore. Because negative, negative, and the spacing is just too close. Again, we're looking at three to four microns in diameter to remove dirt, dust, and fungus. And of course, the release agent. These bacteria is too, bit, too small. The record needle does not care. So that's why we use 35 kilohertz is the best, but we add 70 kilohertz resonance to make it even. Higher frequencies, 125 kilohertz, are made for bacteria. Nothing to do with records. Nothing to do with records. So again, the idea is where we need to be able to remove that release agent. So what we do is, this is our system, we spray the record with the ionizing agent, we brush it in, the record now goes in the machine, and it either comes out in five minutes or comes out in five minutes uh, for a new record, so it's either five and five the first cycle, and then we apply a spray. We apply the spray, this is what it looks like. This now sometimes becomes white right away because that's what the ultrasonic softened in the first cycle. Put it back in the machine. Now if I have lots of water on the record, or it's a new record, 15 years or younger, I use two minute cycles. Other records, only five. So I apply more spray. Ah, more white? Put it back in the machine. The white disappears last cycle in the machine because there's nothing left in the groove to be removed. So this is the lab that we use. That's at our office. 
This is the Keyence VHX 7000 microscope. Uh, here I'm looking at Edison cylinder here. Uh, we use Sure TC3000, sorry, Ortofon TC3000 tester. We put a test record in the machine. Printout says dB gain, signal to noise ratio, everything. Then I retake that record, put it in our system, restore it, put it in, and I see the dB gain all on the printer. So this proves the gain. You can see the gain too by coming and turning your amplifier down because the signal is up, just like yesterday when we had the journalists in. We had to turn the volume down because we had more signal coming out. This is another tester given to me by engineer at Shure, brand new, brand new, just came in about a month or two ago. You need to use an oscilloscope, that same thing. Test record you know, on, on turntable, play the record, this measures everything. Then put in our restoration machine, three or four or five minute cycles, take out, replay the record, shows me the signal gain. So that's what we do. We restore music. We're not just a cleaning system. I don't care if records, sometimes records are so scratched on the surface. I really don't care because I'm interested in what's in the groove. So that, that's basically what we do.